child. I'm in my feelings about some other stuff. Woo! So let's hope this doesn't come across in my video. Me feeling a little bitter right now, okay? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Listen! your girl Teresa Ray <laughs> and we are reviewing Married at First Sight season number 10 episode number four one night spouse <laughs> baby and we digress let's just get right on into this thing you know one of the things that I want to know that want to note is that normally the women are all in on these on this process that they are all for it and just gung-ho you know you can see that with the women when they're getting married how excited they are and how genuine or more genuine they feel than everyone else i've got some other observations that i'm just going to leave towards the end um but if you're new here i like to go couple by couple and now we are at a place that it will flow seamlessly couple by couple so we're going to start with the first couple we saw which was um austin and jessica it is their first night at the hotel after they've been married. You know, and they like to say, normally you would consummate, blah, blah, blah. Okay, listen, none of these people consummated. Let's just get that right out the way. They are all in the place that they want to get to know one another. He's attracted to her and that she has a nice butt. So he's been checking her out. But we can see that their chemistry is genuine, is valid. Um, and you know, she's feeling a little bit uncomfortable, you know, cause he's got to unbutton all her buttons all the way down her back and then zip her down. And you know, she's all like, it's, you know, modesty, honey is a thing. Okay. For those of us who don't know what modesty is, me included, <laughs> we might could take a page from Miss Jessica. Cause I, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm probably, who was that last year? Lizzie, who took her dress off right in front of, I can't think of her husband's name for the life of me right now. Oh, but took her dress that that would be me like okay eventually you're gonna see me naked let's get it over with like i'm one of the people like let's just get it all out the way that way if you don't like all this juicy goodness i got then you can go on early before i'm attached anyway they had a conversation about you know did you leave your ring on the thing on your finger you are supposed to leave your ring on your finger the entire time you are married matter of fact i need to go see where my wedding ring is i haven't worn it um, oh, I, I might have took it right off immediately after my husband passed because it, it made me feel some kind of way with him not being here. Anyway, so Austin goes to talk to her family. Oh, wait a minute. I don't know why this is here because he says something about he doesn't want to have sex and he wants her to feel safe and secure with him first. And that was before going to see her family and then they talked about their little cooking issue i don't know who gonna cook for them honey because she don't cook nothing but uh seafood pescatarian stuff and he only know how to make chicken who cook it he don't like to make chicken and neither do she who who cook it anyway they gonna eat out until one of them gives in so austin goes and meets with jennifer i didn't know her name last week i had made sure to pay attention to it and his new brother-in-law and he, she asked him, okay, how do you feel about the chemistry? Is there any chemistry? And of course he said yes. And then she also asked him, is this only an eight-week experiment for you? And he said no. Now, um, we both know that they have that whole keeping up with the Joneses syndrome, meaning I want the things that are supposed to happen right now. You know what I'm saying? I want the family like my sister. I see all the couples around me. They're married. They're happy. And I want that for myself too. You know, and just because you see it in somebody else, you don't know how hard it was for them to get there. People really do have an unrealistic expectation of marriage. If you've never been married, then you don't know what the fuck you're talking about until you're married. Okay? Every now and again, you meet people who click. And then they never have an issue. They learn to communicate really well. Otherwise, the rest of us are like fumbling in uh, the dark, okay? And are blind <laughs> trying to figure out how marriage goes. But once you get it, you get it. You know what I'm saying? So if I ever get married again, I think I have a better understanding. And I would likely 
marry someone who had been married before too because I just can't see myself marrying somebody who doesn't who had never been married or doesn't really know what to expect so with that said that's enough about me let's keep talking about es uh, Essica mm. Jessica and Austin Jessica meets with his family and grandma's all like so what were your first impressions and you know it kind of puts you on the spot but fortunately, she was like, I believe he's kind, he seems genuine, you know, like they're vibing, honey. But the questions don't really come until the mama asks, you know, what uh, are your intentions? You know, he a mama boy. You know that he is a mama's boy. And she answers herself, well, you know, and then has a nerve to say she's intimidated by the mom, but it's also um, that, it's, that she's protective and you wouldn't expect anything less. Um, so yeah, I mean, it really wasn't much going on with them because right now they are doing really well together. They are communicating well. Um, they actually had the conversation about the, the differences in schedule. Like she's an early riser. He's a late riser and a late to bed. And so how that would work. But mom and dad had been married for 34 years and it worked out well for them. That was kind of the conversation that they had once they met up and discussed oh what you think of my family oh what my, my family say and that was one of the things that they talked about um when they got back to their hotel room it was time for you know to pack and get ready for the honeymoon put all your shit back in your bag i mean it's time to go it's almost like they they must be in the hotel maybe a day and then they uh, overnight then all day they go and deal with the the families or whatever and then they pack for the honeymoon and either they go the next day, I probably the next day or a red eye flight. I'm not sure. I really wish they would give us a time stamp and a date stamp because my ass needs to know timelines. Um, <laughs> I thought it was cute that they're all ready to be matchy matchy. Cause you know, in real life, you know, husband and wife really don't be matching. Now maybe the first day, first week, first couple months or something, y'all coordinate for some of the stuff you go out. But honestly, Honey, after a while, you just be like, put on whatever. I had to, I had to dress my husband how I wanted him to. My husband was um, still wearing his like Pendletons and Levi's, which was fine because he was a big man. Again, this isn't about me, okay? Um, the one thing that got me on their honeymoon, like they did mesh well. You saw that they had good chemistry. Uh, he was holding her hand. I believe he carried the bigger bag which I can't say for everybody, which was a pet peeve of mine. We'll get there when we get there. And um, they seem to really just be enjoying the moment and, and basking in the fact that, they're be, that, they're, that they are newly married and this is something that they really both wanted. One thing that got me though was that didn't they wear them burgundy shirts on the plane? Take them old nasty t-shirts off. Okay, I get that sometimes you get in the bed without showering, but don't get in the bed with your full clothes on that you're carrying the germs in outside, from outside in. Did they take it? Why wouldn't you take a shower? Or was that a different shirt? Somebody tell me, cause I didn't rewind it. I just wrote that bed down like they, they nasty. <laughs> I don't want to talk about Mindy and Zach yet. Let's talk about Taylor and Brandon. That's better. So, I thought it was adorable that he was like, I have a gift for you. Come on. I was wondering where the gifts were. Like, you know, you normally get wedding gifts from your spouse. I mean, my husband just bought me, I think it was two dozen roses. And I think I sent him some liquor. Okay. I didn't do it, but my event planner did because I had forgot. And so she took care of that for me and probably took care of it for him as well. I mean, we did spend a lot of money with her. Anyway, it was a cute little Tiffany necklace that said Mrs. Reed. I thought that was really thought, well thought out. It was thoughtful. It was caring. It showed for me, her, that he would consider her and be thinking about her always. I mean, he thinking about her and they ain't even, they ain't been together but for 24 to 48 hours. And um, you see that she's concerned about her natural beauty. When they, when I take off the makeup, I hope that he's still gonna like me. Listen, makeup is only to enhance your beauty. You're supposed to still be your regular beautiful self. Now that take that from me, somebody who just covers her dark circles, okay, and puts on some eyelashes and some some uh, eyebrows, because I'm not really big on makeup. But when I wear makeup, you know, I feel like it just enhances my already great features. I'm not trying to restructure my face with contouring and stuff, so that if you wake up the next morning, you like, well, who is this lady? No, I, I want it to look like me. Um, but she's beautiful, so she really doesn't have anything to worry about. 
Oh, I wrote a note here because several of you were like, he's suspect. And I'm still not getting that suspectness. That ain't even a word. I'm still not feeling that vibe. I'm just, right now, I'm just feeling like he's aloof and really laid back. You know what I'm saying? I'm not getting suspect from him. But hell, I was wrong about something already. So maybe, maybe I'm off. Maybe my radar is off right now. But I'm still not feeling like. You know, he's suspect and we have something to worry about. So, Taylor says she's never lived with a guy. And he says, you know, he's been by himself all the time. So, he just leaves the toilet seat up. Which is what a bachelor would do. So, really, um, what... What I'm thinking is, he's talking about don't fall in. No, put the toilet seat down. Put the toilet seat down because you're gonna have to sit on the toilet too eventually put the toilet seat down you said you consider her you 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 told the mama and them i ain't there yet that you know that she becomes your priority you know you you you're uh you treat your women well when you're in a relationship because you you know make sure you're concerned for them will be concerned and put that fucking toilet seat down excuse my language i know some of y'all it's a little sensitive about my cursing don't be today, because today I'm in the mood. Today I'm feeling some kind of way, okay? I'm in my feelings about something, okay? Um, so Taylor meets with his family, and she sits down and is very giddy, and you know, I think that's also her nervousness. It's part of her, her charm trying to break the ice, because you know, she's constantly giggling and laughing for stuff. So, um... She says, okay, tell me his secrets. Tell me what I need to know. Honey, and it was like awkward. I don't know if they just paused it for a while. But looking at Brandon's mother, you understand, you should understand where he gets his aloofness from. His mother was really quiet, really kind of laid back, reserved, didn't say much. Kind of made you feel like she was skeptical until she opened up her mouth. Um, I believe that was his aunt that was really doing all the questioning. So... Taylor, you know, she's all like, okay, so what did you want for a wife for your son? What did you want in a wife for your son? And she says, you, you know, check all my boxes. You're beautiful. You're successful. You're a free spirit. And that's what he needs. And your, you guys' goals both have our goal driven. Our goals are aligned so you guys can support each other with that. Okay, so her words were not matching what her facial expression was. So that's how come I'm all like, well, that's how come he's the way he is. Look at mom. Because it just didn't feel like she was receptive to Taylor. I don't know if I'm the only person that got that vibe. But that's the second time that she said that she liked Taylor. So we're going to take it as face value. Uh, Mika could learn some of that. But hold on. I, I ain't there yet. It's a two-headed coin with Mika and Michael. But we ain't there yet. Hold on. Ooh, poor Brandon, honey, with her family, honey. Listen, that is what I expect. I expect people to ask hard questions. I expect their faces to be a resting bitch face the entire time. Honey, mama, auntie, cousin, they wasn't having it. Cousin was running the gamut, okay? She was not taking her foot off his neck. The thing that got me is he was like, oh, I just woke up. I'm, just, I'm really trying to get, just get myself together. Get yourself together before you sit down. Is that, was that because you was nervous and you was scared? I'm nervous. And I'm trembling because you waiting to talk to her family because you already saw that the mama ain't no joke. These are strong black women sitting in front of you, Brandon. <laughs> One of the questions the cousin asked is, so how old are you? And he said 33. And she said, okay, so you're 33 and you're not married. Why not? Uh, part of his answer is, was something like the millennials uh, have a hard time committing. We millennials have a hard time committing. Well, listen, if you're grouping yourself in as a millennial, then please don't associate yourself with having a hard time to, uh, of committing. You just made a really huge commitment by marrying someone and giving her your last name. When cousin was like, give, uh, give us some assurances that you're going to take care of <laughs> Taylor. And he was just stumped and didn't know how to answer. I was like, oh, I don't know how this relationship is going to work. But because he was totally at loss for words. And maybe it was just that he was nervous. Because there's a lot of things that he could have said. Which is one of the things he constantly says. Is, I'm, I'm going to put her needs before mine. I'm going to concern myself about her. I'm going to support her wherever she needs me to. I'm going to be a listening ear. You know, he could have come off the riff with a lot of stuff. But I really feel like maybe quite possibly he was nervous. But baby Taylor's cousin did not come to play, okay? Not at all. 
that's how my family would be. Well, maybe not my mama. My mama would probably be just sitting and looking too. But my friends, <laughs> baby, my mom would have an opinion, but she wouldn't say anything except for, I don't know why she would want to do this. <laughs> so they meet up after to have a conversation about the meeting of the minds with the families. And she said, well, what did you find out about me? And they were like, well, I got, <laughs> it, it, I was a little scared at first. So, you know, nervous. I was a little scared about, you know, but it ended up being well, so much so that I have their numbers and I can call on them anytime or I have, I can call them anytime. They said I can call anytime. And so they got, they exchanged numbers with him. Well, really that was so, that was for Taylor's sake. So, cause if you get over here in this other country and you act a fool, we know where, we know how to track you with your phone number, brother. I don't know if they are really warm and receptive though. They said that they are like most of the parents did. They, what did they say? Oh, I'm happy for them. Oh, they're going to make a good match. Listen, I'm ready for people to be like, I don't know about this. This ain't going to work. He did make mention when they let him know that, you know, understand that Brandon says what's on his mind and that he's very blunt. She made sure to say, listen, just respect me. Come on, girl, set some boundaries. Respect me. As long as you respect me, I don't mind. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, come on, come on, Taylor, set some boundaries. But then when we saw that snippet, I thought, I don't know. We'll have to wait till next week. Cause I, my first reaction was I better see the whole thing before I pass judgment. Like she's overreacting cause he's not really being disrespectful. And I want us to keep in mind that they are really, uh, have two different sets of kind of like, um, upbringing. Like he, he's more urban. She not so much. Uh, that's the best way I could put it. I don't know if you agree with me on that, but whether you do or not, let me know down below in the comments. Let's talk about Katie and Derek. So when they are getting ready for bed, she's all like, my friends gave us a whole bowl of condoms over there, but I'm allergic to latex. Well, you got lamb skin? Didn't your friends know you was allergic to latex or no? Nah? Cause listen, no, this is your husband, honey. You don't know him that well and you will need to protect yourself. Like you will. Okay, you don't know him. I don't know if they had y'all take all the STD tests and stuff or not. Or if that's just conversations that you're supposed to have on your own. So condoms are necessary. Very necessary. But she asked him, what did my friend say to you? And um, he told her. But she's fiery and need passion. And you need to go ahead and eat the box. And screw her right. And of course, I'm being kind on the words that were used. She was embarrassed. Rightfully so, because that's embarrassing. Like, why in the fuck, y'all, would you open your mouth and say something like that? Like, I'm, I'm embarrassed for her. Like, I don't know this man from Adam. And we on TV. And I might like my eight box. And I might like my box eating. You know what I'm saying? And I might like a lot of stuff. But, don't tell everybody. And you know what, I'm really, I know y'all are iffy about Derek and Katie, but I'm just seeing a lot of maturity in Derek, at least from what they're showing. That's all we can go by, okay? Um, when they woke up and he said, no, you know, we didn't sleep together. I didn't want it to feel like a one night stand. I didn't want, to, want it to feel like it was just something and then, you know, go away. I wanted to pretty much have more value. And I, I was like, come on, Derek. Come on, show us that you are an adult and that you really want this and you're trying to really be in love, right? Listen, all I wrote down was Katie with the family was very encouraging. You know, she was nervous because his family means a lot to him. And, you know, and I think they talked about the mom did. She said, I don't want you guys to make the same mistakes as his parents did. And she gave, you know, some what she thought was words of wisdom. You know, I've seen it with my parents and what they've gone through and my grandparents and I have a great support system and blah, blah, blah. But I'm going to say it again. You don't know nothing about marriage until you are married and living together, honey. Even if you living together before you got married, somehow marriage changes things. And I don't understand how. Like you are never prepared for marriage, but you are never really prepared for marriage. People really don't tell you what to expect. That's why I'm a wife style coach, okay? My website will be up at the end of the month. You guys can go ahead and get some discovery calls. We can have some conversations. Listen, as soon as it's up, everything is always going to be everywhere. <laughs>
And wife style coach doesn't necessarily mean you have to be a wife or want to be a wife. All of that will be explained on, on the website. Okay, again, it's not about me and that was just a shameless plug. Now, Derek with her fam family, Derek has already really build, built a little bit of a rapport with his father or with her father. So when he asks questions, Derek is a lot more comfortable um, you know, this is my baby girl. What are your intentions? And you know, it's the same standard ass question. You don't know what you don't know, you know, that kind of thing, but I'm going to give it my best foot forward. You know, I'm paraphrasing, putting my own words to it. But, uh, daddy was shocked when he heard Derek say I had never been in love before, but Derek cleaned that shit up good. Didn't he? It was like he prepared himself for that answer when he came back, but I am a romantic at heart. I am a romantic at heart and I I, I want to be in love. I mean, you know, my bullshit meter would have been on, but you know, it was nice that he had an answer. Then he asked, Ashton Kutcher asked if he could talk to Lindsay Lohan's dad. Who is that that called them Ashton Kutcher and Lindsay Lohan? I can't think of it right now. Um, and he took her outside to, took him outside to ask for his daughter's hand in marriage. I mean, it's a little too late for that, but the gesture was good. The gesture was kind. You know, the gesture was huge. He knew what to say and what to do. Like, I got to win you over. And I mean, that's the winning over thing. Like, I, my my husband didn't ask my dad for my hand in marriage. I wish he had her because my dad probably would have said, do you know what you're getting into? <laughs> I don't think he even had met my dad yet because my dad lives in another state. Again, this is not about me. Um... For the honeymoon, listen, this right here shows you, as per usual, that they don't know each other. I don't have my husband's number yet. Run me that number. So they exchanged phone numbers. Um, and they said that they were going to be the cheesy couple. We find out it is her 26th birthday. And what a better way to celebrate than in Panama. Like, win-win. It was uh, Amber's birthday last year, wasn't it? <laughs> Amber child. And I like that he said that he was crushing on his wife and he believes that they are becoming friends. I also forgot to write down, but let me mention it, the fact that she was moved by him asking his her father for her hand in marriage. Uh, it was big for her. She was about to start crying and then he embraced her. Like, I mean, they look like somebody that matched, like they, their energy matches one another. So if it is lustful energy, it's matching and hopefully it builds into something else. Listen, uh, all bullshit aside, they are definitely higher on the list than Brandon and Taylor, <laughs> Mika and Maya and Mika and Maya, Mika and Michael and that damn Zach and Ma Mandy. Let's talk about that damn Zach and Mandy, okay? Listen, I know y'all wasn't fooled, but he had me fooled. He had me fooled. Child, Mindy and Zach. However, I wrote, first thing I wrote down, I wish y'all could understand this chicken scratch I got here. It says, Zach is a charmer. Again, Mindy's worried about her natural beauty and if he would be attracted to her. <laughs> and it's so funny. I wrote down, this is really what I wrote down. How can y'all say he's not really into her? He's acting like it. I mean, he's waking up whispering in her, and kissing in her face and all of that stuff. How is it he, like... Let me hold on. Hold on. He was serving her her morning coffee in his towel. He definitely has a body um, for the gods, okay? Looks like he might have been chiseled right out of Zeus. <laughs> also, while I wrote down, we have to remember that she is older than him. So she is more mature than him and will probably see some things a little differently than he does. <clears throat> well, when Mindy meets with her, when Mindy meets with his family, she asks for pointers. What is it I can do to have him be more relaxed and be more comfortable? And they pretty much say, you be vulnerable first. You open up first and share first because he's kind of emotionless. That's what y'all see in the whole time. He pretty much is emotion emotionless. He won't react the way you want him to when you want him to. But you open up and it'll start opening up the gateway for him to mimic your behavior. Mm. All right, y'all. And so here, my, the mama, the mama who said that he had commitment issues, 
also told her, I can tell that he's into you. I can tell he's into you. We think you're great. We think you're great. I, it's almost like they're reassuring her that they think she's great. So don't worry about Zach because he's an asshole. Okay, I'm feeling a little biased because, you know, I didn't see the whole thing. I'm, I'm, I'm going off script here. <laughs> I'm taking myself off script instead of following what I got written down. But let me keep going. Zach sits with Mindy's sister and her friend. And I can appreciate her friend coming straight with the shit. She wanted to know, uh, was this something that you were into at initiation at the start of the pro at the start of the application? He said, I was confident when the opportunity presented itself. You wanted to be married, so you said, when the opportunity, so you're an opportunist. Somebody, somebody walk up to you, did your agent tell you to go and do this? And what to say? I literally, this is before I had changed my mind about him, but this is, this is what I wrote. Opportunist. Um, cause she asked him, is this for exposure only? Right after that, he said, no, it's not. I, my conscience wouldn't let me feel good about it. Oh, you an actor too, asshole, dickhead. Ain't that what white people would say? Dickhead. <laughs> um, you know, so the bridesmaid in, in the confession on the side, she says, I'm not sure if he's genuine, but I'm optimistic and a little skeptical. Rightfully so, because baby, this nigga gonna flip the script. Now, when they sat there and talked on the grass after, you know, to compare notes about the family, she opened up and set the expectation of what she wanted, what she hoped for in this relationship. And I really commend her for that. Like, I'm putting my heart on the line and I'm gonna tell you what it is that I want and what I'm expecting. And I think as women, we don't do that enough um, for fear of them, you know, running away, not being heard, look that funny. But I commend her because that's a big step. Like, I want to be loved. I, I'm hoping that this thing will work. I'm hoping that we're a match. Like, that's a huge thing. Only for him to do what he did. So here we are getting ready for the honeymoon. And this was my first indication that he was not all that it was cracked up to me. That he was just speaking nice speech uh, for the cameras and for the friends and for the family. Uh, when she was closing up her bag and he was like, it's only a seven day trip. The tone. Because it's not what he said, it was how he said it. That was the first time that he did something I was not happy with you can see she was taken aback by it too i wanted to say now who you who are you talking to again this is why i'm not in a relationship this is why the man that loved me is gone and don't nobody else want to marry my ass that's a lie somebody is looking for me right now looking at me going mm -hmm, you're gonna be my wife <laughs> crack me up then when they get ready to leave after insulting her about how big her bag was, you know, he the big, strong, muscle-bound man that's a model, you know, that's a fitness trainer, you know, that's in, in good health and perfect shape. Why wouldn't he take the bigger bag? Why would he have her drag her bag instead of switching? That's the gentlemanly thing to do. I don't care if you don't even like the person. If you're going out on a trip, it, when I'm going with the homies, and I got a bag. They will grab my bag too. That's what you do for people that you care about. And when you're dating someone, when there's a man involved, when there's some type of intimate relationship involved, what do you do? You, that's what you do. You do gentlemanly things. But what do I know? What do I know? I'm a woman. I'm just expecting that of you. Maybe, maybe these men ain't doing that. These millennials ain't doing that. Somebody let me know down below in the comments. Am I wrong? Wasn't he supposed to take the bag? So they take the plane ride, they get over to Panama, and Mindy tells us her take on all of the couples. She says everybody looks to be meshing well, vibing well, playful, awkward and cute. Of course, um, Mika and Mike not looking like they gelling. And so she feeling some kind of way. So she go when they go up the stairs. They go in the room and they check out the room she wants to have a conversation about it. And so she begins to talk. And this fool had the nerve to say, are you going to talk to me while I'm washing my face? 
very dismissive, very anal. I thought to myself, you got me fucked up. Like, who are you talking to? Like, that's how I was feeling. And the conversation she wanted to have was about feeling like they were only friends, that they didn't have the connection that the other couples uh, had seemingly developed. I mean, granted, they didn't know each other, but they were trying to bond. The men were acting like their husbands. They were acting like wives, holding hands. The men were carrying their bags, opening the doors. They weren't in the friend zone. And she allowed him to be like, well, we, we're going to, you know, all relationships are different and they go at their own pace and blase, blase, blase. I don't want her to be so desperate that she just puts up with his shit. So wanting to be in love and so, you know, wanting to be cared about that she misses it. I don't, I don't want that. I don't want that. You see me take a deep breath. That's because I'm in my feelings right now. Like he fooled me. Uh, but not for long. You see I picked up on it. But I was really hoping that all of those romantic gestures were genuine. And y'all called it. They wasn't. I was so disappointed to see her in the hallway. Pacing in the hallway. Looking distressed. Looking uncomfortable. Unhappy. Kind of saddened a little bit. You know, really, the word she was searching for was numb. When she was like, I don't feel, you know, my feelings aren't hurt. No, you're just numb at the fact that he could be so insensitive. She said, I don't want to go back into that room because he said, and let me see if I could quote it. I am not building any attraction towards you. What do you want me to do about it? <laughs> Mindy said, I said, I guess it's not going to work out then. And he says, that wasn't the answer I was looking for. Well, excuse the fuck out of me. What answer were you looking for, sir? That I was going to suck your dick, give you some fellatio, let you screw me? What you think? That I'm that desperate? I don't have to put up with that shit. Is that the thing that's going to make you more, make you more attracted to me? If you get my goodies, my goodies, my goodies, not my goodies, like, I don't want her to be so desperate for love and, you know, hoping and, and wishing that, you know, he just is going to grow into this and that the experts knew what they were talking about. Listen, people make mistakes. We get it wrong. You see, I got it wrong. Zach is now the least person on my list. I do not like him at all. I want Mindy to find somebody in Panama and to go and sleep with them and fall in love with some Panamanian, okay? Because, listen, <laughs> she doesn't deserve to be treated that way. You don't even know anything about her, but you don't, you're don't. you not attracted to her? So all of that shit you was doing was fake? Baby, let me tell you. She better than me because we see she went back to the room. Uh, let's go to the final shit show. Michael and Mika. Michael and Mika. We had already said that they didn't seem like they were really on the same page. That she seemed a little immature. That he, I don't know, was a little weird, a little off-putting. We had already established those things prior to this episode. And all this did was bring out the truth. So, I don't know. Um... In her confessional, she said, you know, that he was, that Mike is a great com communicator. He was funny and he's ambitious. And I'm all like, and so when did you find that out? When? Because you ain't spent a whole lot of time with him. Y'all ain't had a lot of quality time together. You only talked the night before for an hour. Think about the event, the reception and stuff. Y'all really didn't have much communication there because you go in and meet with the family and you partying and stuff. And then you only had an hour between when you got married in the reception. So I don't know how you found out that he was a great communicator, he was funny, and he was ambitious. Because, baby, you so quickly changed your mind about his communication skills, okay? Um, in his confessional, he was like, no, we did not have sex. I have a lifetime to wait for coitus. I was like, this nigga is straight corny, okay? I mean, I know what coitus means. There was somebody somewhere who was looking up the word coitus instead of using context clues and knowing that it was sex. I thought, why wouldn't you just say sex? Do you want to seem like you have a great vocabulary? That's what you look like to me. I don't know about y'all, but me, I was just, I, and this was even, this is my notes even before this shit hit the fan. 
Um, she was like, I woke up and he was ordering breakfast. Breakfast is his favorite food uh, the meal of the day. I was like, well, I love breakfast too. I can eat breakfast any time of day. It's good. Um, so you didn't tell him what you wanted and then to find out that, you know, she won't, it was a trip. This was, this is when I really started seeing that, okay, they are very different. Cause she was saying, I, you know, I don't, I don't really try new foods. I don't like to try new foods. Mm -mm. And he was like, so you won't try new foods, but you'll marry a complete stranger. It's a little odd. You know, you're not that adventurous, but I guess, you know, listen to each their own. I guess you could be adventurous in one ways and not in others. You, your palate only likes what your palate likes. I, I, I thought it was odd. So Mika goes and she sits with Mike's family and friends. And you know, she seems a little too comfortable, too talkative to me. I don't know, maybe I'm tripping too overzealous, but his friend or his mama or his sister, somebody said some things that I would take, would have taken away from this personally. One of which was, um, he needs someone that's not going to push him. So he needs someone that's just going to sit back and do what he says. I, I don't know if that's how I should have read that, but he doesn't need anyone who's going to push him because if he does, if you push him and push him and push him, then he's going to shut down. Well, Mika, you just found out that he is not an effective communicator. Five minutes ago, you said you like that he knows how to communicate. He communicates well. This tells you that he doesn't. Anyone who shuts down and does not articulate their feelings or tell somebody to leave me alone that this isn't the direction I want to go or knows how to commun uh, communicate their thoughts and emotions are not good communicators. Anybody that shuts down, normally at that point, uh, communication is off. When I go invisible, when I shut down, that means I no longer am able to communicate. And I communicate pretty effectively. But if I go invisible, that means I'm going to go the fuck off. So you should probably leave me the fuck alone and let me go quietly. But I'm going to tell you that that's what's happening. Please give me a few moments. Let me process the things that you're saying. Thank you. Like, that's me. I don't know. I don't know about you. I also, she said that he was had a hard exterior but really was a softy saying that he was sensitive and that he wanted to be loved better yet he needed it and the reason that he needs the love is probably because he wants to form his own family being adopted and everything and then of course his adoptive mother dying like these are all like flags to me like flag 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 don't push him and he needs to be loved like he need like which means he's gonna re he's gonna require a lot of attention at least that's what i say i could be wrong y'all show could tell me down below in the comments so michael goes and talks to mika's family when they ask him about his expectations he says um mutual respect and you know for us to have boundaries as we get to know each other we can figure those things out that that sounds great sounds like something that we would want to hear like I do want someone to mutually respect me and to understand my boundaries understand my expectations understand my limits so that sounds real good to me I know it, it did to me I was like okay okay Mike you're a little weird but maybe you got some common sense the sister asked have you ever pa cheated in a past relationship and it got quiet it got quiet for a second crickets could be heard honey pen could be dropped you could hear it and I don't mean like an ink pen I mean like a little stick pen and he said I have cheated emotionally that was not my intent but it ended up happening he was honest I don't know how honest he was because uh, you know emotional cheating and once you get connected emotionally once you bond emotionally uh let opportunity present itself honey pressure bus pipes honey we cleaning pipes around here <laughs> But what do I know? I, I, listen, I'm just talking at the side of my damn neck. I might not know what I'm talking about. And y'all show in the hell. Let me know down below in the comments. Mom asked if he was committed to the process or says that he's committed to the process or whatever. And really kind of just, you know, was happy at the fact that he was truthful and honest and understands that communication is important. I'm paraphrasing because really y'all don't remember what she said because I'm trying to get where I'm going. So when they get together and they they have their powwow about you know what the families talked about or what they shared she said at this point she's already pushing him right they had the discussion about him shutting down she was like i would urge you which is i'm pushing you i would urge you 
to talk this out instead of shutting down, to talk through how you're feeling so that we can have a, an understanding. Now right here, she seems mature, like she understands that we need to talk things through and talking things through means I'm gonna listen to you, you're gonna listen to me, that is effective communicating. We are going to try and understand from one another's point of view. I'm gonna hear with the other one's ears, see with the other one's eyes, speak with the other one's mouth. That's what my what the pastor who married us said. And those things are very important because if you look at things from someone else's point of view, they will definitely help you out. Okay. Now here we go. We're getting ready for the honeymoon, and she's all like, "I want to go zip lining. I can't wait to do fun activities." And he was like, "Yeah, no, I'm not doing zip lining. Nope, I'm not. You know, I'm not scared of heights, but zip lining is not a thing. You know, I'm not gonna do it." And so she's trying to get him to be adventurous. You know, she's pushing a little bit. Here we go, another pushing a little bit and says uh what do you think i won't eat asparagus i mean uh, what was it um brussels sprouts my favorite and calamari which i love a lot she said i'll eat that as if that was a trade if that's not a trade to someone who you know is slightly scared of not having a safety net up under them hello somebody but i'm gonna give her credit for trying to make him step outside of his box and willing to compromise something that she didn't like so that he could do something for her. I'm going to give her that credit. So right here I wrote everybody is saying, everybody as in Mindy and Derek, that they don't really look like they fit together. That you could cut the tension with a knife. If you're paying attention as they're walking into the elevator, you can see he's got his earphones on. He is not taking his earphones off, which means I have disengaged. I have blocked you out and she's walking two steps ahead. You can tell that there is something that had happened or something transpired from when they were at the hotel to when they come to the new hotel. The hotel in DC to the hotel in Panama. You can see it yourself because everybody else is holding hands, they're walking together, and baby, they like two feet apart. I mean, body language speaks loud. Well, what we find out, what Mika lets us know, first in her little confessional can, cam, uh, her phone, she says that on the plane, he gave her an ultimatum that we had to have sex within this first week or he wasn't going through with this. Now listen, uh, I'm sure you were taken aback. I was taken aback. I was like, okay, what happened to I have a lifetime equatus? What happened to we're going to go at Mika's time? We're going to take our time. What happened to all of those things? What happened? There was definitely a miss in communication. And I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you, you're not going to agree with me. Now, um, if he said it, which I don't doubt that he did, I am sure that he said it. That is not something that you can make up. Okay. I'm going to say that when they got in there in front of that camera and they started talking and she said, you are Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. That's not what she said. She said, you are one way on camera and you are one way off the camera. And on the camera, you act like you were for me. You told my family that you were willing to wait. You lied. You lied to me. You lied to my family. You're lying on the camera. The moment the camera's off, you come and tell me if we don't have sex during our honeymoon that you can't move forward. As she's having this conversation, okay, like she's expressing herself very passionately and he is not listening to a thing that she's saying. Not a single word. The way he is looking is like he is uninterested. And a lot of times it has to do with the way we communicate with one another. We come in with different communication styles. Like there's a lot of things that you have to take into account when you're talking to someone. One of the biggest things for me is learning how to communicate the way your partner communicates. Not necessarily you changing yours up, but when you want him to hear something or you want her to hear you say something, you have to adapt to the way she's used to hearing things. And him, her coming at him like da 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 is may not be what he's used to even though he's lived with strong black women they may have coddled him because he was adopted and the only boy in the family you understand what i'm saying but what we found is mika's not really a good listener either now i get that He's saying, one, you saying he Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I get that. But what I don't get is why you aren't listening to what he's saying. And he's telling you, Mika, that 
listen, I'm, I'm, I need to learn how to communicate with you. And maybe this is something different. You know, she wants him to just admit that you said what you said. Like, what is the point in that? What he is admitting is, is that he's going to try and do better. And all you can do at this point, because you don't know this man, you're talking to a complete stranger. That's exactly what he, he said. And you guys are getting to know each other. And this was definitely a miss in communication, not only in the way you communicated about um, your desires and needs, Mike, but also... Um, about how to effectively disagree and come to an agreement, uh, agree to disagree. Um, you know, like, cause I feel like he heard what she said. Y'all can disagree with me. Do it down below in the comments. I feel like he heard what she said by saying, you know, um, I'm, I'm learning my wife and I need to learn how to effectively communicate. And maybe what he was saying wasn't that it's a deal breaker, but maybe what he was saying was this is our intimate time to really get to know each other. And I would want to know all of everything about you before we leave the island. Like, I want to know if we're going to jail intimately. For me, sex is a big thing. I mean, y'all can act like it, it's not. He just vocalized it because he don't have no social skills. Like, he it might be a... Who, who was that to say he was on the spectrum? He might be just a little bit and doesn't understand that that might not be something that you say. You know what I'm saying? Even though he thinks it, he should not have opened his mouth up and said it. That's the problem. That, that's... It's a problem. He, you know... And she's all like, you lied about who you were to the experts. And you know, he's like, no, I said who I was. I everything that I said. Because I don't think we would have been matched. Like, she is not. She's unforgiving. Remember I said last week that she was, that her impulsiveness and her emotional state is going to cause a problem in the relationship? Here's a sign to number one. I don't think they're going to make it past the honeymoon. Are they going to break up? I think I saw a snippet of a, um, a snippet of like a article that said a couple's already ca calling it quits. Will they be the couple that call it quits? I'm just trying to, um, check my notes to make sure I don't miss anything else. That really much, that pretty much ends the entire episode. <laughs> So, okay, so here we are, episode four. Let's go ahead and rank the couples again, shall we? I'm going with Austin and Jessica as number one to make it. Um, number two to make it, I'm gonna say is, uh, at this point, because there's, there's five couples, I feel like I missed a couple. At this point, the next people I would say would be Katie and Derek. Under Katie and Derek, I'm now gonna put Brandon <laughs> I'm putting Brandon and Taylor under Brandon and Taylor. You have Mindy and Zach. And the reason I say Mindy and Zach is because Mindy is still like really going to try. And then you have Mika and Mike. Mika doesn't know how to, she doesn't have a forgiving spirit. doesn't seem like to me. Y'all let me know what you think down below in the comments. Um, where are we going to be next week? Looks like there's trouble in paradise for everybody except for Austin and Jessica and Derek and Katie. Honey, I got my eyes open like what? I am your girl, Talisa Ray. Thank you so much for watching my review of Married at First Sight, season number 10, episode number four, One Night Spouse. If it's your first time visiting my channel, be sure to click the subscribe button to be part of the family, become a ray of sunshine. Click the notification bell so it's like, boop, she's uploaded a video. And lastly, for me, because you like me and I'll know it's real, give me a thumbs up. Hugs and kisses and lots of love. I'll catch you on the next review.